Hi, this is Tammy, and I am presenting on surgery case presentation slash progress notes. So people in surgery definitely like things to be very succinct. So what you want to do is learn um, how to provide the most relevant information for them so you look like a superstar. So we're going to start with progress notes. Um, and there are elements that I will mention that will also be relevant to case presentation. So you always want to start um, by saying the name of your patient. So Miss Doe is a 48-year-old female who is post-op day number three, post-op day being zero being the day of surgery, status post, whatever is procedure she had. Let's give her a right hemicolectomy. Um, and that is your identification sentence that you start with all of your case presentations. Um, and if she's had in, any interim events since then, you can mention them briefly. So the next thing you want to say is what happened overnight. So you can say overnight, if nothing happens, you say no acute events. Um, if she had some severe desaturations or hypotensive episodes requiring interventions, you would mention those succinctly. So make sure to talk to the nurse to figure out what happened um, so you don't miss anything. Okay, so that's kind of your summary introduction. The next part, that's equivalent to the S of your SOAP. And now for the O, you always want to go over vitals. So for vitals, I always like to document ranges. So for example, 80s to 150s over um, 90s to 120. And so when you document this, make sure to examine the trends to see if there are any acute spikes or whether there are there's a sustained pattern of um, hyper or hypotensive episodes. So that's blood pressure. Temperature, we usually just care about the max because we want to know if they're febrile. So Miss um, Doe, or whatever we called her, was a little bit febrile. And again, you want to see how long she was febrile for, if they gave her Tylenol or anything else to bring that temperature down. Pulse, again, you want ranges, respiratory rates, um, ranges, and make sure to write the O2 saturation. So I would write two liters by nasal cannula if that's what she's on. If she's innovated, you can write down her vent settings as well. Um, and you also want to know whether there are any drips, any pressors um, that are keeping their blood pressures up. Next part is I's and O's. So the in and the out of your patients are really important. So I have this handy dandy diagram that I like to draw. So this corner here, I put as my eye. So say Miss Doe had 3.6 in and 4.2 out. You want to do the breakdown. So for example, she had three liters of normal saline and then 0 0.6 um, PO. You would write that down. Um, for the outs, there's a lot of different um, possible breakdowns of outs. You can have episodes of emesis. If you have drains that you put in after surgery, you want to write the breakdown of each of those depending on how many you have. So let's say that she had um, 100 milliliters in one JP a drain and then 200 in another JP drain. So you would want to make sure to document that and if she's had any stool movements, etc. Um, next uh, after I's and O's is labs, and I like to do these by hand as well so that I can see really quickly what my numbers are for your CBC here and your BMP, and you always want to see if there's a trend. If your H&H &H has dropped significantly, you want to know um, when their last one was to see if they're consistently low or whether there is an explanation for an acute change. Um, you can cover... Um, micro, if you have cultures brewing, you can, uh, and um, imaging, if there are any daily chest x-rays or any other imaging that you order, you just need to follow up on that and update it. So the next part of your note slash presentation is exam. So uh, for the purposes of the presentation, you usually don't have to say very much at all other than what's relevant to the surgery. But for a note, you want to make sure to have a few key sections. So for example, neuro, you want to write down their Glasgow Coma Scale. It's going to be on a scale of 3 to 15 um, based on their responsiveness um, with their eye-opening verbal response and motor response. Um, you can also do a quick cranial nerve exam. So we often write cranial nerves 
two through 12 grossly intact um, if you do actually do a examination of their cranial nerves. Um, and you can also talk about their motor or their sensation. So motor strength is um, on a five out of five scale. So you would write motor strength five out of five and then sensation, you can write sensation to light touch intact in all four extremities. So that's neuro. And next you have um, H, E, and T. So head, ears, nose, and throat. So here we can say that she is normocephalic, atraumatic, extraocular movements intact, um, and you want to know whether she's innovated or not um, and what O2 requirements she's on. Next, you want to do respirations. Is she breathing comfortably? Is she clear to auscultation bilaterally for uh, cardiovascular, regular rate and rhythm? If you hear murmurs, you should document those. Uh, abdomen, so in gen surge, this is obviously really important. You want to know whether they're non-tender, non-distended, whether there's bowel sounds, uh, and whether your incision is clean, dry, and intact. And I usually like to write with staples or if there's a dressing there, um, if there's oozing, if there's erythema, if there's fluctuates, um, you want to document that as well. For extremities, uh, you want to know if they're warm, if there's pulses, um, if there's edema. And then the last thing I like to do for my exam is I always like to document my lines. So you can talk about peripheral IVs and where they are. You can talk about Foley's and comment on the color of the urine that's coming out because that will give you an indication of their hydration status. Um, the JPs, what those look like if they have an NG or OG tube in, etc. So that is uh, the beginning part of your progress note. And then for your assessment and plan, oh dear. All right, so for your assessment and plan, your, oh dear, okay. All right, so for your assessment and plan, your assessment is very similar to your first sentence. So it would be, Miss Doe is a 48-year-old female, post-op day, blah, blah, status post, um, blah, blah, and then doing well, if she's doing well. For your plan, you can choose to organize your plan by problems or by systems. Systems is usually more common for more complicated patients who are in the ICU. So we'll do an example of how you would organize that. Uh, so the first one is usually neuro, and here you would talk about pain control. So if they're on a dilated PCA, for example, uh, you want to make an assessment of whether or not their pain is being under control and whether something needs to be added or weaned from that. Uh, next, you can have cardiovascular. So if they're hemodynamically stable, you would write that. If there are fluids, um, you would write that. So um, that's kind of your general assessment there. For pulmonary, if they're, especially if they're innovated, you would want to um, wean O2 or aim to extubate at a certain time, and you would want to specify that. Um, and then for GI, so we write F-E-N-G-I to kind of summarize their uh, nutritional status. So if they're NPO, you can start soft diet, start liquids, for example, or advance whatever diet they have as tolerated. Um, if they're on a prophylactic PPI, you want to make sure they're on that. And then here's where you would also comment on electrolytes if they have hypernatremia or um, any other electrolyte imbalance. Uh, next, you can cover GU. Here's where you would comment on the BUN or creatinine. Uh, you might want to pull their Foley after a few days to decrease their risk of infection. Um, and after that, then you can cover ID. So here, it, you know, say that they're on unison, 
day five out of seven that will kind of give a snapshot of antibiotics that are on and how much longer they'll need to be on them. And here's where you would comment on cultures if um, your patient was septic or if you were culturing a specific site. Um, and then I like to put a general prophylactic column where you can talk about prophylactic antibiotics, whether they're on sub-Q heparin, whether they have SCDs to decrease the risk of um, DVTs. And then finally, you can say dispo to wherever they're going, sick you, home, and then the parameters for that. And that's about it. Hooray. Okay.